care of the ball and, and make sure that we get points out of that drop. So I, I definitely take responsibility for what happened on that play. Cole, you were putting a lot of defensive pressure on the Michigan quarterback, Patterson. Uh, you had a, a fumble force. So we had three forced fumbles in the first half. Just tell us about uh, that. what it took to generate those uh, three fumble recoveries. Just tenacious get after attitude. And we're a very high pressure team. We're going to bring the heat to most games. We did this this game too. Um, but it's just beating blocks and just wanting it more, I guess. I mean, give credit to them. That, that's a fantastic football team. They have great players, but never once did we think we weren't going to win this football game. And we're calling blitzes and setting blitzes. It's with the attitude that we're going to make a sack every time we go. I think when you blitz like that, eventually you're going to get to them and you're going to force a few fumbles. Elijah, did you feel like that uh, the team was gaining confidence as, as the game went on that, uh, that you could beat this game? Well, we came in here confident that we could win this game. Uh, that was the expectation the entire game. Uh, you know, going into the fourth quarter, the, the fourth quarter where we were turn things up, uh, you know, there's always an expectation there, and that's not going to change no matter who we play. So we wanted to win, we came here to win. For any of you guys, I mean, how, how did Michigan compare, sort of size, speed, wise, to, to what you, you know, saw on tape in, in preparing for this? I mean, they're Michigan. They're athletic. They're a Big Ten team. Um, I mean, they're athletic. They're big. They got good players. They got great players. Um, NFL guys all over the field, probably. Um, and you know, I mean, that's really all I gotta say about it. They're exactly what you what you see on on tape. It's a lot of athletes in different places. This is the second year in a row you've taken a top 10 team into overtime. And could you compare the two in terms of uh, your, how you felt about last year? I know all you guys played last year, but I'm just curious how would you compare this year's game with last year's in terms of your emotion and that kind of thing? Or maybe it's not too early for that. I, I think we expected to win the football game since we saw that on the schedule a year ago. I think maybe last year we came in a little more wide eyed walking into that stadium, but. This year, we walked into the stadium today, I don't think a single person was nervous. I mean, we all felt confident we were gonna win the game. So we got into overtime. There wasn't a single person that batted an eye. I think we ended up gonna lose. So didn't go in our favor, but it's encouraging to me and us that our team is as tough as we are and to see that no matter what the rank is in front of the team, that we're not gonna play any different than we would anywhere else. And I think that was encouraging to play hard today. You guys kind of uh, came together with the Michigan team after the game and embraced each other. What was that moment like? Was that something you planned ahead of time or just came after the game? No, it's just a mutual respect for your opponent. Um, I don't, once you play the game, once the game's finished, there's no reason to disrespect anybody. There's no reason to be upset with anybody. Uh, it's, it's a competition. It's, it's, it is what it is. So we, we came together. It's a mutual respect for what we do, um, for who we are as people, them, us. Uh, there's a lot of love. Uh, one side is obviously more a little bit upset than the other, but you know it, we're, we're glad that we got out there and could compete. And uh, you know, wish we could have came out with the win, but they played very hard. We played hard. There's no reason to be upset about it. Is that a regular thing now that folks with the other team? Or not yep, every game. Every game. Do you have anything to say to the Michigan fans in terms of uh, if they can get pretty pretty wild with some teams, but they seem pretty happy. With very respectful, but none of us want a pity party. And I think, I don't know if that's what it was, but we appreciate the support and love that we get in big games like this. But um, yeah, thank you again. And Kelvin, you had uh, Connor back today and uh, uh, Sean uh, Sandin had a touchdown and you're getting some pass plays out to Ortiz Hobbs and to Kel. How did you feel your offense was working against a very good Michigan defense? Um. We played well. Uh, we definitely shot ourselves in the foot a couple times with things that we know that we have to take care of, uh, protecting the ball, keep the ball off the ground, um, penalties, foolish penalties and things like that. Uh, you know, there's things that we can control and take care of as a team and for ourselves where we, where we can keep from hurting ourselves before they hurt us. And uh, that was probably the biggest thing. But as far as uh, when we did execute, I think we played well together as a group. Uh, offensive line got really great push today uh, and, and we're moving some guys and getting to the edge. And, you know, that was kind of the, the, the start off. Once they, they got going, we were able to get going. Anything else?
They just that's what Jen, just your thought about playing. You're playing a very good uh, offense. Uh, I, Lodge, I'm sorry. You were playing a very good uh, Michigan offense, good quarterback, uh, very good freshman running back. What were just some of the challenges? Uh, you were able to make a lot of plays and put pressure on them. Um, I mean, across the board, they're a great team. You know, like Kelvin said earlier, they got a lot of NFL guys. Um, very talented team. So we, we prepared all week like we prepare every week. Came out here with the same expectation as we have every week. That's not going to change. No matter who we're playing, we're just going to continue to work hard, play our game. We're, we're tough with a brotherhood, and just we're just going to continue to play our game. All right, thank you guys. Thank you. <laughs>
like that if you're going to have a chance to win this super talented team. Uh, they're, they're extremely well coached football team. And uh, we didn't get any of those in the second half. We didn't get those those big plays like that. We just were able to get one of those. I think uh, I think uh, we probably could have won the game. We really could have too. You know, the second and one at the one yard line, there's nothing off sides. And we needed to get points there. Got bumped back to six, and we ran a play action pass, and, and uh, Kelvin just didn't see that guy. And tried to bang a throw in there, and we didn't get points there. That would have made it a two score game, even if we kicked the field goal. We went up by 10, and, and uh, maybe could have hung on and won the game. So, uh, anyway, it was, uh, it was a heck of an effort. Our, our, our guys are, they were playing really, really hard. And, and if you're on the sideline down there, you can see they didn't flinch, not, not no matter what happened. Things didn't go our way. You know, you know, they hit the fake punt, scored the touchdown. We had the turnover. Uh, you know, nobody, nobody flinched. They just, they just went out there and played like they were supposed to win. And for that, I'm incredibly proud. You have a lot of talk in the offseason about this game in particular and what you guys needed to do to uh, beat this one. Did you feel like the team was ultra focused on this week and right past the whole? No. We didn't talk about this one anymore than we talked about any of the rest of them. We talked about Rice more than we talked about anyone because that was the first one and the most important game of the year. So I mean, we we talked about every opponent. Play Texas San Antonio next week and talk about them a little bit. Everybody else is on the schedule, but no more than any other. of an advantage was it having Connor Slomka back in the lineup today? Advantage? Yeah. I mean, did is, we have any kind of a personnel advantage? I don't think we had any personnel advantage. Those, those guys, how many guys they got in that locker room going to play in the NFL? I mean, Connor's a good, tough player. But they wouldn't put him on scholarship over there. I mean, it's called what it is. That dude, he's a tough kid, and I love that kid. He runs hard, he plays hard. I was glad to have him out there because you hand him the ball and he's a hammerhead. He can get positive yards. But at advantage, we didn't have any advantage. It certainly helped our team, it helped our offense to have him in there and be able to hand him the ball. He's different than the other guys we've got. I mean, he and Sam are different. Uh, and they're both really good at what they do. So I'm a little pissed off. Thank you. Any more questions for Coach? Coach, this game should Jalen McClinton had a big play, stopping a fourth and two play. And is he all right, by the way? He took a cut, he went down on. He's okay. Um, I, I think he's going to be fine for next week. He's in a locker room and, and everything seems to be fine. He's not, not with the training machine anymore, so I'm optimistic about it. How would you feel? Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. I was going to ask about the field goal attempt by Cole Talley, how you felt about it. I know he's kicked that length in practice. Yeah, his uh, squad's a little tight. He had sat out of practice on Wednesday this week because it was a little bit tight. And then I thought he was fine going into the game today. And, and he really did a decent job of kicking. He kicked off and, and uh, kicked the one, the, the one kickoff uh, into the wind at the one yard line. So I mean, he just made me those, those kicks started to wear him down. And I saw him limping off the field after the field goal try on the last play of regulation. He said it's just been tight all day, so uh, it just it just is like a bad golf shot. It just and it didn't go very far. It didn't go very high. And I, w I wish we could have banged that thing through, but it would have been a heck of a finish. Coach, the, the two teams came together at the end in the end zone. I mean, is that something you've seen typically after games? Does that mean anything to you? Uh, most most teams are, are pretty respectful of uh, our alma mater and. Jim asked me before the game if we did something like that uh, after the game. And, and so I, I just told him, hey, come down to St. Albany Water. We'd be honored if you could come down and join us. And, and, uh, so, but uh, they, I, I'm glad to see those guys do that. And, and the fans are very gracious here. Uh, we heard the chance at the end. And like I said, I, I hope that our team represented our United States Army well today. And, and perhaps that. Uh, compelled the crowd to 
to uh, to, to want to want to chant and cry for what they saw out there. So uh, I'm certainly proud of our guys. Ticked off and disappointed we, we lost, but I'm proud of their effort for sure. And the, the, the fake punt, I mean, Michigan did have a penalty right before that. Did um, did that factor into kind of the call there? Or anything? No, or we, well, think? it was the same call, mm -hmm. and uh, we were bringing the the guy that was covering the guy that caught the pass. We brought him down to add him to the box, and they got they jumped off sides, and the same call. We creep that guy down. We're going to bring him. They checked as soon as they saw him. They moved the push protector over and they snapped it to him and threw it out there. But we brought that guy, but we took a guy from the box and ran him out there in the snap. And the kid caught the pass, and we hit him, and we didn't take him down. If we'd taken him down, they'd have fallen short. It was, they probably would have had seven yards. It would have been three yards still to go. We made a miss, made a good play, and uh, they went on to score a touchdown on that drive. And like I said, I was disappointed in myself. I wish I'd have changed the call a little bit. When you're playing, it's really hard to win a college football game. It is really hard to win a game in Army. Um, people don't realize how hard it is to win a game at Army. And so if you're going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the number seven team in the country, then you better let it all hang out and go for it. And I told our guys, we're going to go for it. And we're going we're, we're gonna to lay it on the line. We're not, we're not going to be safe. We're, we're going to go play. And, uh, and so if I'm safe as a coach, that, that, that can't be the way I lead. They got to know I got confidence in them. We're going to go for it. And you know what? We went for it. We got a guy out there, and we missed the tackle. It wasn't because he wasn't trying. <coughs> he was in great position. Just didn't make the play. And you know what? Like I said, they got some really good players. That wasn't the only tackle we missed. Today. We missed some other tackles because they're pretty slippery and pretty athletic. They got a great team. And, and this is the winningest football program in college football. And we just came here and took them to overtime with a bunch of guys that, frankly, nobody at this level recruited. So that that's that's heart and toughness and determination. And I believe you can win with guys like that. We can in a position to win the game. So uh, I'm not disappointed in any one of them and in their, in their, in their performance. It's hard to play perfect, but uh, I know their effort was good. And it just wasn't good enough. Go ahead, Ken. Mr. Coach, is this the kind of game where your senior leadership really shows through that they're able to tell the younger players and, and, and be able to raise the level of the team to be as competitive as they were today? I think there's just... Culture is such an overused word. As soon as somebody says culture, like, ah, oh, culture, your culture, everything. But there, are, there's positive cultures and negative cultures, and there's there's cultures where there's there's a belief that you're going to win, and, and it's just part of this this team. That black flag we carry that symbolizes offer no quarter, accept no quarter. That's fight to the finish. That symbolizes everything about this program, everything about that team, and the hearts of every one of those players in there. They are going to fight you to the finish. You're going to have to kill them if you don't beat them. And it's not just the seniors. It's this football program. They believe that. And every time we play, we think we're supposed to win. And you know what? Every citizen of this country, when boots hit the ground somewhere and it's the United States Army, the expectation is our Army's going to go win. They're going to kick those butts of whoever's trying to fight us. You know what? They're right. The Army's going to do that. And these guys are going to go lead them. They're going to lead that Army. So that's that's part of who we are as a program. And, and that's not just because we're at West Point or just because they're going to be soldiers. It's, it's something that they've built and they've developed in that locker room. I mean, it started five, six years ago, and, and it's built to this. So uh, we're not going to flinch. We're going to come back next week, and we're going to prepare and do the best we can. And it will be as hard for us to go beat Texas San Antonio as it was for us to try to beat Michigan today. And that's just who we are at, at, at West Point. And we know that. Our kids understand that.
hopefully we'll give the same kind of raw determination to do today. All right. Thank you, Coach. Thank you.